continuing to work together towards a common goal. Pray the in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay, so on tap for today, does this work now, Willie? Yes, it does. Okay, so we're going to cover a number of different items. We're going to start off with uh, Deacon Brian with a Deacon Board update. Then we'll move to Misa with third quarter financial statements. Uh, Pastor Sam has given us a nice uh, video for his community outreach update. We'll be back with Misa for the 2023 annual budget information, and then we'll end off with uh, voting information. Uh, we shouldn't be too new for everyone. So let's get started, and I'll pass the time to Brian. Great. Thank you, Keith. I will be doing the Deacon Board update here first, and then I will be going over to the Mandarin um, uh, quarterly members meeting to take care of the business over there. Misa right now is giving the financial report over the Mandarin, and then we'll be running back over here. So if you have any questions, if you have any questions for me, please do so while I'm here, okay? All right. So there's, these are our main discussion items. We're going to talk about deacon board changes, next-gen ministry updates, incorporation updates, and membership changes. And then there are, for members, there are a number of voting items that you need to pay attention to, which are on the ballot for this quarterly members meeting. So please pay attention, and uh, you will, I believe the voting is, will already be open online. First of all, Deacon Jeff Jung of Mandarin Congregation. He has completed his three-year term, and he's decided not to stand for re-election to a second term. We are very, very thankful to, to Jeff, uh, especially over the last few years. His service was especially over throughout the, the COVID pandemic itself. Uh, always very, very helpful in providing a lot of insights into what a lot of the other brothers and sisters in the other congregations, uh, their opinions or their thoughts. And in particular, you may recall that uh, Deacon Hoxson Shu passed away very, very shortly uh, before, uh, before the pandemic started. And Deacon Jeff, who had just come on at the time, filled in very admirably for him. So if you, if you know who Jeff is and you ever see him, it's, I think it would be uh, appropriate for you to, to, to thank him or acknowledge his service. At the AGM in 2023, we will be presenting a, a thank you gift to, to Deacon Jeff at that time. I'm very pleased to announce that we have a, a candidate for, for the Deacon Board who will be com coming on, or who, stands for, uh, who is standing for, for election. Ken Liu from the Mandarin Congregation, who many of you are familiar with. All right, he has been unanimously approved by the DB and EB as a candidate for the deacon board. And the way, the way this works here at ET is that uh, the, the pastors will usually nominate people for the deacon board, and then they are, uh, they are screened through DB and EB, and they must be unanimously approved before moving on from there. Ken, you, you will probably know, has been very, uh, very, very active, involved in many roles here at ET since coming in 2004. He's served on EB, for example. He served on a, uh, he's currently on the Mandarin Ministry Committee. He's, he is currently serving on the Missions Committee as a representative, the Nehemiah Project Committee, as well as he's been involved with the, very actively involved with the Mandarin Fellowship and with the Children's Sunday School. So um, next week... Next week, Ken will be uh, doing a meet and greet with the Cantonese and Mandarin congregations. And then two weeks from now, December 4th, Ken will be available um, after service, after English service, for you to meet and greet him and ask him any tough questions that you wish, uh, and so on. His, uh, his, his, statement, his statement is already available online. So again, go to etcpc.org, go to the bulletin, all right, and there is a link to his, his statement sharing a little bit more about his faith journey, about his, uh, his activities here at ETNN, why he wants to be a, a deacon. Actually, nobody wants to be a deacon, but he'll explain why, why he's chosen to uh, be. It's, it's basically, he's, he is talking about why he, he is stepping up to serve as a deacon. So the voting, actual voting to approve Ken as a deacon candidate will take place at the 2023 AGM. 
Here's our next gen ministry update. A search committee has already been established for the part-time children's ministry coordinator. And in our search committee, we, it's, we have Deacon Jeremy, we have Pastor Janet, we have Linda C., we have Carol Tao, and Tracy Law as our uh, representatives. Yay, yay to our representatives. Thank you very much. All right. Excellent. So even if you never, even if you don't feel up to taking on a leader posi- pos- leadership position in name, these are the many, many kinds of roles which are absolutely important, which we would love to have people serving on. The search committee has finalized and posted the job description. The job description has already been up for, uh, for about a month, and we are now accepting applications for the position of the part-time children's ministry coordinator. The children's ministry coordinator is initially a part-time two-year contract position, and it's renewable based on performance. And at that time, we will continue to uh, assess and evaluate uh, depending on performance or depending on our needs. Does, does that part-time role need to be expanded? Um, do, you, you know, what, do those responsibilities need to be revised? Uh, and, and so on and so forth, right? So don't think that just because we, it is currently a part-time position and a contract position that this is, this is the way it will stay. It is, it's the option to very possibly turn into a permanent position or into uh, in, into a more full, into a three quarters or a full time position, depending on needs and of course depending on income, depending on our ability to support such a position. Oops. For any staff uh, search, for a filling in of any staff search, this is the general process. Okay, and if you ever want to see. If you ever want this slide uh, or want to have this process sent to you, the DB can certainly do so. This is our general template for any search process itself. And I'm not going to bother reading it, all right, but you can certainly see the different steps that need to take place before we get to member approval. There's, a, there's a, um, various steps in terms of the search committee first, passing through DB and HR and then EB and pastoral staff before we get into, um, before we get in, into member, member voting. So this is the process that will be voted for any positions uh, that we have up. Incorporation updates. Uh, the, plan in, the plan in the uh, early part of 2023 is that the Deacon Board will facilitate a review um, of ETCBC's statement of faith and our current mission statement and our current vision statements with the pastoral staff. We'll be placing, uh, it seems appropriate to um, place the primary responsibility, first of all, in the, for the theologically trained pastoral staff to do a little review of the statement of faith. And why are, why are we doing this? It's not because we're changing what we believe, so this is merely a review right now, but as uh, since the statement of faith itself will be incorporated into the incorporation documents them, themselves, basically a statement of who we are and why we exist, we'll, we'll be including the statement of faith. The, the current statement of faith is uh, left over from our current constitution, and the language has pretty much not been changed for about 40 years, <laughs> or 30 years. So as you can imagine, we're hoping, uh, again, not to change what we believe, okay? There won't be any, any sudden changes or anything like that, but there is certainly a, a, a real need to see whether the statement of faith communicates effectively to, to a contemporary generations and effectively represents who we are. Um, and at that time, also, it will also be an opportunity to do the same in, on the Chinese side as well, too. The English version will always be the official version. English version of documents will always be our official version, but it is also an opportunity for the Chinese congregations as well to review the language and review how things are expressed at that time. So the statement, so we're trying to um, do a number of things at the same time. The statement of faith, and because uh, as we've been talking about vision and mission over the, you know, and where are we going as a church, this is also an opportunity for us to sharpen uh, perhaps the statements that, we, that we've been using or that we've been having perhaps also strategizing how can we make these more visible. I mean, we've had all sorts of inquiries, especially after Pastor Sam's sermon, oh, I didn't even know we had a vision statement, or I've never heard a vision statement. Well, they have, it has been in existence, and it has been, I think, for the first couple of years after we brought in the adopted vision statement, we were trying to incorporate it in, and I think we moved away from it over the last couple of years of the, of the pandemic. So it's an opportunity to review these I think these, these, these statements that give us direction 
Ultimately, these are just statements, and what matters is what we do as a church, as a community, to live things out. I think you'll all agree what we actually do and how we live things out is just as important or more important than just words on paper. But certainly, these things will help give us direction. So once completed, all these statements will be presented to members for approval. We'll have some kind of approval vote there. And, they'll be in, and the statement of faith itself will be uh, incorporated into the incorporation documents themselves. So we're hoping to, again, as with anything, we set out a timeline, man proposes, God disposes, as I believe that's how the, that's how the saying goes. We're hoping for the first half of 2023. <laughs> Have you never heard that phrase before? Humans, prop man proposes, God disposes. Yeah, really. Anyways, I'm just old. That's the way it works, okay? Let me pause there for a second. Questions, issues, comments, applause, no, okay, that's fine. That's, we'll just go on. Thank you, Katie. Thank you. Okay, no, I'm not done yet. It's not as if I'm done, you know. Anyways, uh, membership matters. Membership does matter. Okay, membership matters. Uh, Rosie has, uh, as you may know, Rosie has transferred out her membership at ETCBC. This is a thing, folks, transferring in, official transferring in and official transferring out. Um, and, of course, Rosie uh, has, uh, it w is currently attending another church. All right, we're getting into our voting items. The first voting item is an, an approval vote for an interim next-gen pastor. And you might be saying, why are we doing an approval vote for an interim next-gen pastor? Isn't Pastor Janet doing that? Yes, Pastor Janet is, in fact, our interim next-gen pastor. However, in recognition that her new responsibilities are, are different from her current job description, okay, because right now she is overseeing children's, youth, and young adult ministries, we're asking you to officially approve uh, Jan pastor Jen as the interim next gen pastor because it is technically a new a, a new position a different position for which she was hired and of course DBHR has been in conversation with her about the terms of her the, the, the about responsibilities and current terms of, of that uh, contract right now so this is by way of even though it may seem like a formality we do need to do that we feel we do need to do that as as members to recognize that this is a substantial change this is a, a, a not just a this is a a real substantial change to the job description itself the db and hr does plan to make a public job posting for a permanent Next Gen Pastor, starting in January 2023, following the full search process. It will be public, it will be open, and Pastor Janet will be eligible and will be invited to apply for the permanent position. So we're just trying to make it clear that we are not, uh, we're not short, making any shortcuts. We're not just giving Pastor Janet the position. We're going through the, the formal search process itself. Of course, this is our opportunity again to to continue to vet her and ask ask her deeper questions, especially as and, and for us to again assess whether we believe she's the best fit for long term for the for the permanent next gen pastor position, as well as look at other candidates if if they are available as well too. Um, so, <clears throat> a search committee will be formed to review the the job description and then carry out the search process. Uh, again, and uh, although Pastor Janet understands, uh, we've been in conversation with Pastor Janet, she understands that this is the situation, that it will be an op open process, this job will be, this job position will be um, um, open to the, to the public for, for uh, application. Okay, so that is the first thing you're going to be asked to approve as members. Again, at any time, if you have any questions, please, please let me know as I'm going to disappear over to the Mandarin QMM immediately after this, and I'm going to switch places with Misa. Deacon re-election approval vote. Uh, Deacons Jeremy Ng and Kim Chu have completed a three-year term, and they will stand as candidates for another term. And if you want them to continue because you don't want to, you don't want to put your name forward, then by all means, please approve them, okay? Yeah, 
Uh, so member approval is required to re-elect re Jeremy and Kim for a second term on, on the Deacon Board. Again, it will be three years. I think you will agree uh, that they have been very important for providing uh, stability over the last few years. I'm particularly grateful to them and for all their work as well, too. Um, Member uh, approval or disapproval to re-elect me for a chair for another term will take place at the 2023 AGM. So I'm tired, and if it would be really great if you didn't re-elect me, okay. That would be a really, really good thing, actually. But anyways, uh, this, that's what you'll be asked to vote on today for uh, approving the re-election of Jeremy and, and Kim. Okay, the last item Last item for members to approve at this QMM is with regards to staff salaries. So we're going to kindly ask any staff to step out for a minute or two while we uh, do this present, well, while I present this here. So any staff who are present, we're just going to ask them to step out in the atrium and then we'll bring you back in in a couple of minutes. You're still, yeah, Tim, you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Tim, I think it would be appropriate. You can, you can step out, too. He's not paid staff, but that's okay. okay. Joel, can you close the door? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Janet, you're not supposed to be in here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, you'll come back in a couple of minutes. There you go. All right. Thank you, Mathis. Thanks for closing that door. Okay. Every year, every year, the members do need to approve staff salary adjustments, any staff salary adjustments that are proposed by the Deacon Board. And again, what happens is that every year the Deacon Board reviews the staff salaries. And the information that we have is, first of all, we do have salary guidelines provided by the CBOQ, our, our governing denomination. And they have this intricate grid. For those of you who really want to know, and even for those of you who don't want to know, basically what the CBOQ has is they have guidelines for minimum salary, for minimum amount of salary for the pastoral staff. And it's, an it's, it's, it's a whole grid that's updated every year based on number of years of service, location in Ontario and Quebec, for example. So obviously somebody in, in living in Toronto as opposed to outside of Toronto has a different kind of allowance for housing and so on and so forth. Um, so they have a grid for salary, so suggested salary guidelines, responsibility, like includes, takes into consideration the responsibilities that they have as well too. So that's one piece of thing that we get every year from CBOQ. The other thing that we get is a recommendation for a cost of living allowance, a COLA uh, allowance that is again recommended by the CBOQ every year based on uh, again, uh, current conditions such as, such as inflation. Now, we also consult with the EB treasurer about the church's financial situation, and we keep an eye on the overall salaries and uh, the roles, and, and the roles of, of our staff and so on and so forth. So, as you can imagine, this is, uh, this is a little bit of a tricky discussion and uh, takes many things into consideration. To provide you with a little bit more context, just to provide you with a little bit more context, over about the last three years, what we have been doing here is that taking into consideration, and this was started back when Norm was, was chair, so I can't claim all the blame for myself, okay? But we've been uh, um, assessing staff salaries, comparing them to the minimum or suggested CBOQ salaries, and we've been trying to, whenever possible, actually make adjustments to narrow the gap for certain staff every year. We cannot afford to make, all, make adjustments to all staff salary and close the gap immediately, um, right, in, in one year. And so what we've been doing is maybe about two or three staff a year as we are able to, based on budget, we've been taking a look and saying, hmm, how much can we afford to narrow the gap there? So that, that's something we've actually been doing for the last three years. In terms of the cost of living allowance, 
For example, in the first year of the pandemic, CBOQ recommended 0% for that first year. That first year, we chose to actually give a cost of living allowance to all staff in recognition for their work. The next year, uh, basically this current, this current fiscal year, CBOQ did recommend a small cost of living allowance in terms of our financial difficulties and because we had given a, a COLA the previous year, we chose not to give a COLA this, this current year, but still do a number of salary adjustments. For the 2023 budget, we are again, basically what we are uh, uh, again proposing to do is that we will not have one uniform um, adjustment for all staff. There are a number of staff that we are, uh, I think, feel that take priority in terms of making salary adjustments for both narrowing the gap or uh, recognition for their extra, the, the extra amount of burden or service during the pandemic or that they have uh, achieved higher uh, qualifications and therefore, according to the salary grid, are entitled to or, or should be considered for uh, a salary bump. And so that's what we're doing. We have about three staff this year that we are providing more than the COLA, making the adjustments there uh, and providing staff salary adjustments there, but it is not uniform across the, we're not making sal staff salary adjustments across the board for all staff this year. Overall, what's the big picture? Overall, for 20, the 2023 budget, uh, the total amount for staff salaries is actually being reduced by 2.4% from the 2022 budget. We're not reducing anybody's budget, or uh, anybody's salary, okay? That's just due, of course, to staff changes. And this 2.3% re reduction includes both the adjustments we are making, which is an increase, but also, of course, the decrease in our uh, staff salary obligations. So let me pause there. This is the last slide for the DB report. If you wish to certainly ask me questions in private afterwards, we can I can, I will, I'm also certainly willing to answer any of those questions, but I'm just going to wait here, pause here, before I end the DB report. So any questions at all from anything that we've done so far are, is I'm certainly open to right now. There are three voting items again, all right? We have, uh, we are voting to um, approve Pastor Janet as the interim next-gen pastor. We are voting to re-elect uh, Deacons Jer and Kim for another three-year term. And then we are voting to approve the current, uh, the proposal here for, for staff salary adjustment. Question? Uh, is there a breakdown? Sorry, John. Um, because salaries are confidential, uh, I can tell you uh, what I feel that we can tell you is that the adjustments that are going to be made this year are specifically to Pastor Janet, to Katie and to Pastor Luke. Um, for Pastor Luke, it's about narrowing a gap uh, with, with, with the minimum, with the CBOQ minimum. For Janet, it's in, re it's in recognition of her ordination. Uh, and for Katie, it is in recognition for her. It's, it's, it's both, because there is no minimum CBOQ minimum for just staff rather than pastoral staff, we, we feel in terms of the, the, the extra responsibility she's taken on over the pandemic, she, we, we feel that's necessary to give her uh, an increase there. Um, I will, I will only say that I, I think it's only appropriate for me to say that the, the adjustments in each three of their cases is greater than the cost of living, than the cost of living adjustment, which was proposed by CBOQ this year. CBOQ was proposing 5% this year, about 5.6% for staff this year in recognition for, high, for, of course, high inflation. We're all familiar with that this year. So as you can see, again, to clarify, again, we have these three staff that we've chosen to prioritize for staff salary adjustments, uh, but there's no across the board COLA adjustment for all staff, if that's okay. All right, again, if you want to talk with me in private and you really, really want more details, I'll see, I'm, I'm happy to talk with you, but I'm, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable about what should be revealed and what shouldn't, of course. So thanks for that inquiry. Go ahead, John. Uh, 
Um, just for the, it was prorated, obviously. It was prorated for like, we had hoped to hire for November, December. So obviously there's a little bit, yeah, so, so it does in that case. Since we haven't hired yet, obviously there is a, there's a little bit of math there to be done. Yes, 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 exactly, all right. However, um, however the, the, we, we looked at that and we said, ah, okay. It's, the overall picture though is that we will have a reduction from, for 2023 from 2022, about roughly this amount, that kind of thing. Again, you, if you want to go into more details, I'm happy to take you aside and, and then we can look more at some more details if you like. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And that's the end of the Deacon Board report. Thanks a lot, Brian. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions, you can direct that to Brian later. He does have to rush off to the other congregations for their QMM. Uh, since Misa's not back yet, and I guess Brian will tag her in for here, uh, Willie. Actually, maybe I can do this. I'm going to fast forward us to uh, Pastor Sam's outreach update. Hi everyone, I'm Sam and here are some community outreach updates. I'm going to talk first about some new initiatives and then I'll talk about some of the ongoing programming that we have. Now in terms of new initiatives, Pastor Raymond and his team have been working really hard to welcome some newcomers from Hong Kong into our midst and we've been working to try to support him in that and so one thing we've done is gotten in touch with some of the settlement workers that we've worked with at the hub for the past 10 years and seeing if there are any services that, that can help our newcomer friends. This could be anything from finding new jobs.
Thank you to Pastor Samo for his update. Um, Misa's not back yet, so it'll just be some dead time here. Uh, <laughs> tell a joke. Yeah, I'm not good at that. No dad jokes here. Um, if you feel so inclined to do so, we will take free will offerings for the lunch. Um, I'm going to go old school and pass the offering bag around. As, ta as, as Tim aptly made note, probably people don't carry much, uh, much cash around. Sure. Yep, just pass it around. So Annie's going to present the voting information slide. Huh? Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. This is a pretty great turnout. Um, so, OK, so voting starts now. Uh, the link has already been sent out. It's on your WhatsApp thread or whatever thing you're using. Um, so voting open is open for two weeks. The last day is two Sundays from now. And yeah, if you need to vote by proxy, just call any of our leaders. We can help, help, we can help you do that for you. Um, if you have any questions about how the voting works, or if you have membership questions, you can feel free to email me about that. OK, so there are quite a few items that are being voted on. Uh, so Misa is going to cover the Q3 financial statement. And then these are all the DB items, the interim next-gen ministry pastor, deacon re-elections, and staff salary adjustment that Brian went over. And then um, also next year's full church budget, the 2023 missions budget, as well as the church leadership election. So everyone's up for election. They're all on the same ballot. So one ballot, you've got your QMM stuff, and then you've got your election stuff. So just a quick note that the EMC candidates are not on the ballot. We do not have candidates at this point in time. When we do have candidates, we'll bring that up at the next QMM. Any questions about that? So I'm just going to quickly go through the candidates here. So for EB, we have Julie for chairperson, term two. Also for second term is Misa for treasurer. And uh, no EMC chair. Uh, for CMC, we have Uncle Kenny. And then um, for MMC, we have Raymond Zhang. <laughs> Sam and whose dad? Daniel. Ah, oh, gotcha. Thank you. OK, CMC. Uh, they've got. Cuddy for, I don't know how to, is that for, Cootie? Cootie for worship, and then they're kind of mirroring the EMC thing with the flat leadership. So we've got Grace Chang, Gary Young, Joey Chan, and Dennis Sung. If you see Dennis, say thanks, because he's been on EB for four years now, and he's been really great and really steady. Okay, and he keeps going, it's crazy. Uh, for MMC, we've got Martin Chen, Louis Luo, Jeff Jang, Carol Cow, and Haifa for evangelism. Um, yes, you can just put abstain if you don't know anyone, but I, I can tell you like these people have been serving a church since I was on staff. So you can you can put approve. <laughs> just you know, help us out there. Uh, and that's it. Does anyone have any questions about voting or the candidates? I think that's it for me. Yeah. So I don't see Misa back yet. OK, so enjoy your lunch. We'll take a break while we wait for Misa to come from the other QMMs that are all happening at the same time.
Hello. I have no slides, but I thought I'd tell you what's up going on um, next year's budget's general service team of me. <laughs> um, for those who don't know, there were maybe seven items that were on the docket for this year that didn't happen because of our flood and then our gas leak and then our that we had four fire safety tags that we needed to clear. So we didn't get to a lot of our projects this year. Um, and actually on to next year, we've been asked to cut our budget. So there were three um, long standing renovations that we want to do, but can't do. So things like the front steps, things like the Daniel Den continuously leaking wall. And there was one more item that's just going to be pushed forward. Next year, our big uh, general service. Oh, thank you. Our big general service project is going to be fixing the leak in the front. So if you ever come in from the front door, you'll see those two buckets, the water catching buckets, and they're like permanently there. They have their own little sticker markers so that you know where to put the buckets. Um, we know the cause of the leak. Um, the cause is it's not going to get bigger, but essentially on top of that section is our HVAC um, unit, and it's sitting on a <coughs> a platform, that platform is sitting on a curb, and the curb is cut in a shape that's supposed to be perfectly fitted um, to the roof. But when we moved into this building, it wasn't perfectly fitted. There was a little crack on one side. And so for many years, volunteers go up to the roof, uh, roof and patch it um, continuously. But the patching is never gonna fix the actual non-fitted part. And so we're actually going to uh, hopefully endeavor in replacing that unit because it's always breaking so we're gonna get you know the boom and we're gonna lift it up get a new unit and then time it with a, a full fix of that full section so that's supposed to take care of the the leak um, for your own knowledge because of this ongoing um, problem our insurance does not cover anything related to damage caused by that leak so if heaven forbid something happens in that front area because we never addressed it, there's a $25,000 deductible. So we're gonna be paying it for it. Um, we've had a lot of people go up there. We're pretty sure it's fine. It's been the same small leak forever. And knock on wood that we're not gonna have any emergencies. So that's just the general service update. Um, I do have people who signed up from the ministry Sunday to help out. So don't worry, I'm not, it's not just a team of me. Luckily for you guys. Uh, anyways, that's it. I'm just talking while I'm like waiting for Misa to come in through those doors. Uh, I also wanted to say thank you to the EMC folks who really stepped it up in their terms. Thank you to Keith and, and I'm looking around, Steph and Eads and who? Tochuku. Victor, they're not here, I can't name. Katie, you're pointing at a chair. <laughs> um, yes, for, it's like navigating through pandemic is really hard, so thank you, EMC. Thank you for Annie. Um, Annie, uh, who's really been such a rock in the EB. So uh, thank you uh, for your years of service. Thank you for all you've done. And um, on to a next year of mystery. Thank you. Hi, Misa. Oh, thanks. Thanks for entertaining everyone. Yeah. Sorry. Were you just improv? I don't know. Yeah. Because. <laughs> okay. 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 Good. This will be. So sorry. There was. I didn't realize the translate. With the translating, it takes a lot longer in the other congregations. Uh, I haven't even been to CMC yet, <laughs> but it's okay. Okay, so a couple things happened in Treasury in the last quarter. So way back in July, we approved two policies at EB, which is a gift and kind policy, which we had one before, but it was, uh, we just added a little bit more detail um, to it. And the benevolence expense policy as well. Uh, we no longer, uh, so, um, benevolence is when we uh, help someone out financially. Um, and we didn't have, uh, there was, uh, there were some details that were missing, so we filled them in. Um, 
And those are available too if you ever want to read them, um, just let me know. Uh, you'll also note that the weekly tithing reporting in the, in the bulletin um, has changed a little bit. You'll be able to see year-to-date numbers now so that you can see how we're doing uh, financially more live month to month, um, weekly as well as month to month. Um, and then also on our main page, etcpc.org, you'll see there's a donate now page. And so that's before we go into the different congregations, just the main page. Um, and that's so that guests can easily get to our page where they can donate something. Um, and it goes straight to our Canada Helps, Helps page. And that's the preferred method for guests or one-time donors or family with upcoming holidays. If you have family that are going to come visit us and they want to make a donation, uh, we prefer if they use Canada Helps. Um, yes, there is a um, 35 to 4% fee. The donor does have the option of covering that for us so that we get that full 100% of whatever they like to donate. Um, but that just makes it easier for our treasury team so that um, uh, it's just less work for us to enter that one person for a one-time one -time donation. And that donor also gets a tax receipt right away from Canada Helps. They don't have to wait all the way till February when we run our usual tax receipts. So, um, and then finally, the online expense voucher, uh, so for those, for those of you who are submitting an expense, um, I cleaned up the, the account code page so that it's a bit more clear to see what account you should put an expense under. So I hope, I hope you've used that and it's helpful. Um, there's a line missing under there and uh, it just says that monthly financial statements are pinned up on the bulletin board outside. So now that we're in church in person, you can take a look. Every month I'll be updating them when the financials are ready. Okay. Which one do I press? The right arrow? Okay. Okay, a couple of things we've had to vote on EB just to increase the budget a little bit. Uh, mainly because we didn't expect, we didn't really know what was going to be happening in person this year, so we didn't budget it this year, but we've had a lot more in-person events. Um, there's been more expenses due based on such things as toilet paper, kitchen supplies, things like that, that because we're here and we're using those things. Uh, so we actually went a little bit over budget, budget, or we think we will, and so we had to vote at EB for these things. And there are a couple hundred dollars here and there, but I wanted to let you know that those things happened. Okay, any questions about this slide? Okay. Okay, on to the numbers here. So revenue in uh, the third quarter, was about $16,000 more than in 2021. And then the next line is year to date. So from January to September, we actually had about $50,000 more in revenue uh, than in 2021, so that's, that's great. Um, however, we're, we are in a little bit more of a loss position, $74,000 this year where we were in a loss position of $47,000. Um, some of that is due to the emergency repairs we've had to do. Also, we don't have the, um, uh, the wage subsidy that we're receiving from the government last year. And so that finished, and so um, that, that's impacted basically, that line. So, in terms of revenue for January to September, um, overall we're doing a little bit better than was in the budget. And just as a reminder, the way I came up with the budgeted revenue, because it's, it is a bit of an estimate, is I took the average of the last five years of tithing per month, and then I added that up. So, that's how I came up with that number. So, anyways, we're doing a little bit ex uh, better than expected. In terms of expenses, um, we have um, in the salaries and benefits line, you'll see that we've spent, it looks like we've spent about $4,200 more than in the budget. Um, so at the time that we ran this report, which is at the end of September, we hadn't received all of the grant um, funds that we would have, uh, we get from the government for the summer students. So we've received that now. So that's come down. It's probably, we're probably around the minus $100 mark, so not a big deal. 
Um, church operations and admin, we're doing okay and all the other. Uh, missions fund, that $500 was a grant amount that we received from CBOQ for Pastor Israel. Um, so it got paid out to him. So it looks like we're in a negative, but we also received that money. So it also nets zero. So that extra money received is in the missions fund as a, as a donation. So, um, but we still have to report it like this. So it looks like we spent more money, but we didn't really. And the Nehemiah Fund, uh, that's just um, the amount that we've paid to our members' loans in interest. Uh, we'll be paying that again in December. Uh, and I also want you to let you know that we are also paying in, um, in December $42,700 in member loans, our annual amount. Um, so we have two more years of member loans before we were completed paying those off. So 2023 and then 2024. I think that's it for this slide. Any questions about this slide? Oh, we're moving along. Okay. And these are our ministry expenses. Oh, hello. <laughs> Ooh, that's bright for your eyes, bud. Okay. So... Anyways, all the ministries have not spent, uh, they've, they've spent less than their budget. Um, all I have to say about this slide is if you've helped out with something, you're still hanging on to those receipts, please submit them as soon as possible. Uh, preferably, preferably by the second Sunday in December would be great if you'd like to receive your funds back before the end of the year. Okay, you will, you will get your funds back, but it'd be, it would be good if you did that right away. Okay. Um, and then the last slide for this section, I just did a comparison of where we were at in the last three years um, up until the end of September. And um, last year we were at a loss, I already said this, about $41,000. It's just showing visually we're at a loss of $74,000, which is okay because we voted that we we're going to be in a deficit position of over eleven hundred. dollars $111,000. So I don't think we'll actually be there because we didn't do all the renovations we had planned, but um, uh, so this is expected. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Okay. Um, you guys all know this. Okay, we don't need to do this part. I think you covered all of this. You watched Sam already, right? <laughs> okay. Shall I just go on to the budget? It's, okay, it's still my turn. Um, Julie's talked about this. Yay. We talked about missions? Oh, does, is Dorit? Yeah, Dur oh, that, I thought it was you, Dorit. Come on up. Okay, so um, basically the budget for missions has gone down compared to last year. And um, the main reason for that is that... Um, Pastor Israel is now no longer going to be supported as a missionary um, by us. Um, he's now working part-time at North York Baptist Church, and so um, we'll no longer um, also be applying for CBOQ grant to cover part of the, um, the funds for his support. So um, that's great. Um, uh, and... Essentially, um, overseas missionaries stayed the same, local missionaries has come down. And then um, STM, um, because we have um, financial sort of, we, we had to cut some costs, we've come down on our STM um, amounts as well. Um, and so it brings us to a total budget of uh, round numbers was what I wanted to aim for. <laughs> There's no other reason for that, but um, uh, $50,000 compared to $60,000 from last year, okay? But the amounts for all of our overseas missionaries and local missionaries has stayed the same, okay? So we have not cut anybody's, um, any of the missionaries' budget, we have not cut, but we have also not increased it since last year. So on to the 2023 budget. Um, so in the final column is the proposed budget for 2023. Um, so 
so this is the revenue page again. I, I calculated an expected revenue based on not five years this time. I just did it for 2020 to this year so far because um, things have changed so much since the pandemic that our revenue is so much less than it was in 2019. So it didn't seem accurate. So I just took three years. Um, so I came up with a revenue of 580,574. Um, we are still actively looking for people to rent the church, but I kept space usually at zero because we really don't have anyone on uh, seriously yet. But um, the leadership is actively looking. Okay, any questions about this page? No. And then expenses. So expenses, we have um, salaries. Um, let me just go to my notes. Okay, yeah, so salaries and benefits, I mean, obviously that's a little bit less than last year. Um, it does include the salary for, the expected salary for the next gen ministry uh, part-time staff. Church operations and admin, that includes things like, um, uh, like so, so office supplies, kitchen supplies, um, member meetings, uh, not, not for EMC, but church-wide member meetings, um, if we buy food for things like that, photocopying, internet, in, uh, insurance, yeah. So that's what that number includes, and that's um, sort of based on what we've uh, paid this year or what our vendors have told us our next year fees are going to be. And uh, but, uh, building operations and maintenance, so that number includes the uh, $32,000 expected renovations uh, that Julie discussed already, plus um, utilities, um, building security, safety, snow removal, landscaping, um, cleaning, these kinds of things. So what's not included in this budget, I'm not sure if she mentioned, is there's three things that um, were in this year's budget that we didn't complete, but we didn't include them in next year's budget either because I didn't want to have a big deficit. So um, those three things are repairing the front entrance steps, waterproof and fix a Daniel Den wall, the east side of the church, and then replace the bro uh, broken windows in the basement. So those things will kind of vote um, as needed, as we find vendors, things like that at future QMM meetings. Okay, that in total is about $38,000 um, to do, but it's not included in the budget. Uh, and then ministry programs, that's, um, you know, uh, ministry programs, EMC, CMC um, includes next gen, usually youth and children, but then it'll be next gen ministry type expenses, um, things like that. And uh, missions we talked about already, and then NMI expenses we talked about, they're going to be the same. So that's our total expenses expected for 2023. Any questions about these expenses? No questions, okay. So again, this is just a comparison. I've already talked about the numbers, but the expected uh, deficit for 2023 is about, I said so bad, 61,443. Yes, Norman, ask me a question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a spreadsheet for this, just a second. Okay. So in 2020 and 2021, we received about 22.5% 22 of our entire year's income in the last quarter. Actually in December. <laughs> if I were to add the last quarter, it'd be more like 38%. Uh, yeah. 
just looking at 2021, just looking at the numbers, so 30, 30, 38, maybe 39% of our annual donations or corporate donations, whatever, our income comes in the last quarter. And last year it was, yeah, almost 23% came in, in December. So, um, and so last year, uh, in December, we received $127,826, and in October, November, close to 50 grand each. So what is that? That's like uh, just under $200,000 in the last quarter. Does that, does that make sense numbers-wise? I didn't look at it that way, so I kind of took an average of each month's tithings for the last three years, and then, and then that's how I came up with the... Yeah, yeah. Um, we had no grants this year. So yes, it would be yeah. So so generally, tithing would be need to be increased, or we need to find people to rent the church, things like that. Yeah. I think we'd need to come up with an extra five to six thousand dollars a year of some kind of space usage income to really break even. Yeah. So a month. Did I say a year? A month. Five to six grand a month. Right. Yeah. 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 I am. And that doesn't even include those extra renos that. We, sh we were, we were going to do this year, but it just got crazy with the emergency ones, so. Yeah, let me get to that slide. Yep, I got a bank account number for you. Okay, I think I've covered all of this. So let me go to the next slide. Um, so here's just a com comparison of our fixed costs. Fixed costs are things that we have to pay. We can't reduce them, spend less. Oh, oh, I'm changing my own laptop and not the church's, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, we've covered this slide. Okay, this is the slide. Um, so um, fixed costs are on the left-hand side, things like staff salaries, missions, operations, building, member loans. These are things that we, we can't not pay. So they're called fixed costs. And so that totals about $602,000. Um, but if our expected revenue is 580, we're, we're not even able to meet those fixed costs. So we're automatically in a deficit situation. Um, it, it was the same, I, I presented a similar slide last year. Uh, so here's our bank account. So at the end of September, we had 145,362 in our checking bank account. We also have an investment savings of about $349,000, so which totals 495 as of October 31st. Sorry, I changed the numbers. Um, and then we should set up outside, you know, six months of reserved a fixed cost, so we can pay for all those things, uh, which is about 279, which leaves about 216 dollars. $216,000, which we can use to cover the deficit of the 61443 and still have some left over should we need some emergency repairs or we can vote on certain repairs as the year goes by. So. Absolutely, yeah, but we don't want to, no. So I guess the things that would be under control, our control, would be cutting costs. Where? I mean, we'd have to kind of decide that as... EB or as members, voting members. Um, the tithing is not, you know, that's up to everybody. 
um, something I can't predict, I can guess. Um, and then the space usage, like, we got to rent a church. Like, we have a big asset here. We got to use it. <laughs> so, it's an asset. Sorry. <laughs> we don't... So sorry, sorry. We have a large facility. <laughs> this, Janie and I are like, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, if we need to get, you know, at least five thousand dollars in some kind of rental income to 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 break even going forward. A long term partner. And we're not just we're not and when we when we're looking for people, we're not just, you know, looking for anybody, we're looking for someone we can partner with that has uh, aligns with our visions, et cetera. So I mean that makes it make a bit more difficult obviously, but we wanna um, develop those those longer term relationships so yeah but the pastors and the staff and eb were kind of actively keeping our feelers out there for for these types of relationships so any other questions i think that's the last slide that is the last slide okay sorry i took so long i have to um i'm gonna go to cmc <laughs> thank you misa for a very detailed financial report I wanted to serve pizza. I got, <laughs> I'm buying pop for, I, when I buy pop, it's for Norm, okay? <laughs> Anyways, uh, it's 106, so we managed to still kind of stay on time, even though we started a half hour late. So good job, everyone, eating and participating and listening. Um, so let's end off this uh, long day together in prayer, and we can pray for all of the agenda items today. So let's bow down for a word. Lord God, we want to thank you so much again for uh, continuing to be with us as ET congregation. May you continue to give us uh, insight as to how we uh, can use this church productively for you, uh, not only just uh, to meet our expenses and costs, but really to, to use this building to glorify you, Lord. Uh, with all the other voting issues that uh, have come up. May you give us time to think over these issues uh, seriously and uh, vote accordingly. Um, we just pray for uh, the upcoming week. May you guide us in all the different challenges that you put before us, uh, both together individually, as families, and as friends. And we pray also in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. If you guys can help put away the tables, that would